everyone. My name is Nina Camplin and I am the online arts facilitator for the VC Gallery. Welcome to another one of our Wednesday Workshop live watch parties. Um, today we're going to look at doing a snow scene in the style of Bob Ross called Winter Stillness. So that's what it's going to be based on. And I'm not going to follow this exactly, I'm just using this as a guide. Um, because Bob Ross obviously painted in oil paints and I'm using acrylics which is the main real difference between this so his are a lot um, slower drying them than mine so to start with I'm just using um, a piece of board but it, it can be done on canvas even though it's already got a white base to it if you've got a new canvas it will have a white front to it I'm gonna put um, a white ground on this just so that it's wet because I want the the colours I'm going to use to mix with this. So I'm just making it wet. This is quite, this is just a white acrylic that's um, quite watered down. These are the colours that I'm using. Um, you don't have to be exactly the same as, as me. As long as you've got a white, a yellow, a red and a blue and a brown. That's really all you need. Um, now I'm using uh, cadmium red, that's alizarin crimson and this is a phthalo blue and this is burnt umber and titanium white. So the white's probably the one that really has to be the most important because uh, titanium's a lot more opaque. So I'm going to start off with um, the yellow and in a style that Bob Ross does it, he crisscrosses his strokes so you're doing like lots of little X's across the page and you will be picking up the white from underneath so although you're using the yellow quite strong it will start to di dilute down and I'm using quite a large brush as well and then without cleaning my brush I'm going into the alizarin crimson and I'm going to put a row of that along the top just above the, the yellow it's still leaving a space at the top and then once I've got that all the way across, I'm going to start blending it again using this crisscrossing motion and bringing it down into the yellow. And you don't really want to have any kind of like difference between the, the red and yellow, it needs to kind of flow into each other. So you can keep blending and blending until you've got that quite smooth. And then I'm going to start Actually, while I've got the red on my brush, I am just going to put in some horizontal strokes with red in the foreground. I just want to kill this white off a little bit, really. In fact, I am going to wash the brush for this because I would like these to be more red than orange. There we go. And now I'm going to start on the phthalo blue. These are just random. They don't need to be specific. So with the phthalo blue, I'm going in at the top, again using the crisscross strokes all the way across and then bringing it down to blend. I'm going to just put some more red into this. Just using a clean brush to blend this a bit more. There we go, I've got a graduated sky in there. With the blue again, and a lot of the white, make it quite pale. I'm going to again put some more blue down into the bottom ground area. And then I'm just going to run a clean brush across this lot. So I've got rid of most of the white Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start putting in some distant trees. So for this, I'm going to use the burnt umber. And you can do this with a brush, or you can use a sponge if you'd rather. And I'm going to start just putting in a... If you start with the colour quite strong at the top of the tree, and then it starts to pick up the background colour and fade out towards the bottom. And 
I'm just kind of stippling this on. I'm just going to mix a little bit of the blue into this to make it a little bit darker. I brought this down to the horizon line, but what I'm going to do now, I'm going to clean my brush and then I'm going to go back into it with the yellow and white. And I'm going to bring that up from the bottom to fade this out so it looks further away. Smaller brush now. And what I'm going to do now is I'm I'm just going to put in a uh, this distant tree in the um, in the kind of middle ground, and I'm going to use I'm going to use the bird umber for this, and I'm going to come up from about. distant tree in there. I'm going to um, start using this, uh, I think this is about a half inch brush. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start putting in the snow on this, this right bank. So I'm just using the titanium white on its own and I'm going to come in across the horizon. And I'm just starting to form some banks that will blend in with the, the colours I've put down already. And you can see it's almost got that colour to disappear, it's just looking like very soft shadows now. So next I'm using the palette knife and I'm going to take the, the blue, oh I'm sorry, the brown with a little bit of the blue in it. I'm just going to put in a, kind of a, a shadow for the bottom of the bank where it meets the water. Now I want to make this look a little bit more like water. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, um, the brown and the blue. I've got a little bit of blue here. I'm going to mix it with the white. And I'm going to start making some reflections. So I'm pulling it down. I'm just going to run the brush across it horizontally. And now we've got a feeling of water. I'm going to add a little bit more white on the water at the front. And then back to the palette knife. Just going to add a little, some little flashes of white on the top of the water where the where the bank joins the, the surface of the water. I'm going to come in like this. Okay, I'm going to start putting some banking on this side now. I'm going back to this half inch brush again. And I'm going to just use the titanium white and I'm going to bring a bank in that comes across and quite high up. It's just starting to merge with the colours in the background again. And you need to put the plain titanium white, just as pure as you can, on top where it's reflecting the light. And now I'm going to look at 
this distant tree here. Now, Bob Ross has always favoured doing using fan brushes for fir trees. So what it does is if I use the burnt umber with the fan brush and then starting with just the corner of it and then you kind of work your way down backwards and forwards. I'm going to put a bit of blue in that so it stands out from the background a bit more. And then just another one coming in from this edge. I've got some fir trees in there. I'm going to just put a, a little bit of kind of snow highlight on these. So again, using the fan brush, I'm using titanium white with a bit of blue in it, just so it's not too white because it's a distant snow. So I want to tone it back a little bit. And I'm just going to put a few bits in. And then I'm just going to put these little bushes in in front. I'm going back to the um, half inch brush. I'm going to start with some burnt umber. And I'm going to put this down underneath them as a kind of a shadow base for them. Stippling it this again. I'm just going to clean this brush off. Now I'm going to use white with some of the, the yellow. And then using the brush kind of sideways on, I'm going to start doing some indication of these tree, these uh, shrubs. Now we have some bushes. So now I just need to put in these these taller trees in the foreground. I'm going back to the palette knife, and I'm going to use the I'm going to use the some of the blue mixed in with the brown. So I want it quite dark. I don't want it to be too blue. And I'll start with these on this side. Now I've got a big one on this side as well. The one on this side I'm going to take right off the top of the canvas. I'm going to go back to the white and just put a bit of an indication of snow. It's a good way to pull them out from the background so where you've got very dark background behind it you can put a lot more white on. Going back to my fine brush now to put some some branches in on these trees. I'm using the, the blue and the brown together really dark because I want this to come forward because they're right in the foreground so we're gonna just take these out. Add a bit of water to it to make it flow better. I'm doing is as I'm putting it down I'm just kind of twisting the brush like this as I'm going along because branches never seem to grow completely straight you might even have some that go downwards Obviously you can go on forever adding loads of branches, but just to finish this off I'm going to put some of the little sticks in behind the... Sometimes get just a few little twigs growing out from the base. Or 
or you might just have some grasses. And some random ones coming out from the bank. And there we go. It's a, a basic winter winter scene. I hope you, uh, this has inspired you to have a go. Um, you do produce your own painting at home. Please do post it on our um, VC Gallery page on Facebook because we'd love to see it. And I'll see you again next week. Bye.